India is now emerging as a manufacturing hub for defence production, and this transformation steps are taken because of government defence policy scheme. In 2014, the government issued 217 defence licence to boost manufacturing in defence, and now, the number has increased by 460 in last five years. India will not only make substantial progress towards self-reliance in defence sector, but it will also become a major player in the field of defence exports. In 2020, the Indian government introduced a new draft policy that sets to make $25 billion defence production target, including making $5 billion from exports in the aerospace and defence goods and services by 2025. Export business contributed US$1 billion United States dollars to the total value in 2019. Defence exports in the country witnessed strong growth in the last two years. India's defence import value stood at US$463 million United States dollars for financial year 2020 and is expected to be at US$469.5 million United States dollars in FY 2021. India targets to export military hardware worth US$5 billion United States dollars in the next five years. India may be a big importer of defence equipment, but has been making steady progress in exports of such products to a number of countries, including those who are big names in the export market like the US, Australia, Finland, France, Germany, Israel, South Africa and Sweden. According to this draft policy of 2020, the Ministry of Defence will set up a technology assessment cell to assess industry's ability to design, develop, produce and re-engineer assembly lines to manufacture major systems such as armoured vehicles, submarines, fighter aircraft, helicopters and radars. At the moment, India is manufacturing everything from artillery gun, aircraft carrier to submarines. India is manufacturing Tejas by HAL and INS Vikrant, first indigenous aircraft carrier one, by Kochi Shipyard, which is expected to be commissioned in 2022. The government had approved the export of indigenously developed surface-to-air Akash missile system and set up a panel to ensure faster approvals for acquisition proposals by various countries. India now developed many crucial weapons indigenously and are increasing its quality and benchmark to international standards to export this system to other countries. Countries like Armenia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Bangladesh and Myanmar also interested in India's defence supplies. Because of low cost as compared to other countries. Very recently, India inked a deal with Romania to sell its indigenous build Swathi radar system at a cost of $40 million. In its strategic outreach, Modi government decided to present itself as an alternative to China in providing quality defense items to nations in Indian Ocean region and ASEAN countries. Now, New Delhi has set out to join the bandwagon of countries that seek to expand their reach and influence by offering arms and military equipment on sale to smaller nations that depend on imports to meet their needs. This will not only help New Delhi to check China's policy of encircling India, but also bolster its image as a security partner for friendly countries. As part of its intention to emerge as the preferred military partner for Indian Ocean region and Africa, India has come out with a list of 152 defence items that are available to friendly nations. This includes the Tejas fighter aircraft, Dhruv and Rudra choppers. Besides the light combat helicopter, the Brahmos supersonic cruise missiles and the Akash air defence systems. Eventually, the Philippines could emerge as the first export destination for the Brahmos cruise missiles. Earlier this month, India signed a key pact with the Philippines for the sale of defence material and equipment which are likely to include Brahmos cruise missiles. While India has increased the range and is working on enhancing it further, but the export variant will have a 290 km range. Current development in Indian military bases. India is currently engaged in developing a military base on the Agalega Island in Mauritius and a naval base at Seychelles, Assumption Island, 
to boost its maritime presence. This development is a manifestation of Modi's 2016 vision for the Indian Ocean articulated as security and growth for all in the region. According to the report, the new base that is coming up in Mauritius will be essential for facilitating both air and surface maritime patrols in the southwest Indian Ocean and as an intelligence outpost. In February, External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar visited Mauritius and the Maldives in an effort to boost trade as well as defence ties. India and the Maldives subsequently signed an agreement to develop, support and maintain a Coast Guard harbour at Sif Varu. Government Initiatives and Indigenous Private Sector to encourage more participation from startups and micro, small and medium enterprises in defense research and development in achieving the self-reliance goal. The Defense Minister, Rajnath Singh, released a new version of Defense Research and Development Organization Procurement Manual 2020. There are plans to establish new infrastructure including a defense park in Kerala to manufacture defense equipment for the armed forces. The project is aimed at promoting micro, small and medium enterprises and boosting the Make in India initiative to increase defence manufacturing in India and make the country a reliable weapon supplier to friendly countries. The Indian government allowed the following FDI limits in September 2020. For new licensees, FDI allowed up to 74% through automatic route. FDI beyond 74% would need to be permitted under the government route. For existing licensees, infusion of new foreign investments up to 49% can be added by making declarations of change transfer within 30 days. The Defence Ministry estimates potential contract worth US$57.2 billion United States dollars for the domestic industry in the next five to seven years. The Defence Ministry has set a target of 70% self-reliance in weaponry by 2027, creating huge prospects for industry players. Indigenous Private Sector As the Indian government has come out with a blueprint for self-reliance in defence procurement, Indian private sector is seeking a level playing field with some actionable measures for its active participation in fulfilling the twin objectives of self-reliance and export. Private sector players have lauded the government's draft defense production and export promotion policy 2020 as a well-structured apex-level policy document, which is in line with the self-reliance goal. The draft document has clearly defined the actual goals and high-level strategies for indigenous R&D, production and exports in the defence sector. The share of the private sector has been steadily increasing, with participation of more players. For India to reach anywhere close to the proposed 2025 targets will require a radical overhaul of the current defence production regime. While a bulk of defence production is still attributable to the twin government pillars of defence public sector undertakings and ordnance factories, the emerging private sector will have a significant role to play if India aspires to ramp up its capabilities. Several private sector players like Bharat Forge and Sundram Fasteners are keen on tapping the emerging opportunities in defence. Sundram Fasteners has set up a subsidiary to focus on the aerospace and defense segments. It has orders for forged, cast and machined parts for all-terrain and land systems vehicles for defense. In the aerospace segment, Chennai headquartered MRF has emerged as a key player in the supply of tires to Indian Air Force. It has started supply of tires to advanced fighter jets like Sukhoi as part of an indigenization program. Mahindra Firms and Hinduja Group, owned Ashik Leyland, are supplying armored vehicles to the Indian Army. Another key player, the Kalyani Strategic Systems and Bharat Forge of the Pune based Kalyani Group, are producing a range of defense equipment, including artillery systems, ammunition, missiles, and air defense solutions and small arms. 
but their numbers, at present, are not much to speak of, but, the number of private companies, have to increase. In 2018-19, the size of the entire private sector, in the defense space, was 17,350 crore rupees, about one-third the quarterly turnover, of, Reliance Industries Limited. Data in the public domain, shows that Tata Advanced Systems, had 341 crore rupees revenues, in 2017-18. And Kalyani Strategic Systems had 119 crore rupees revenues, in 2019-20. But, the private sector is once again looking, to make big moves. The latest relaxation, in FDI norms, does open the door wider, for more strategic alliances, between foreign defense firms and Indian private companies. While, the larger trend seems to be towards privatization, and foreign investment. But, the public sector still remains, the backbone of defense production, in India, and therefore, needs proactive reforms. Chief of Defence Staff, General Bipin Rawat, called for a revamping of India's defence, public sector undertakings, with a focus on improving, their work culture and quality control. Because, with no doubt, the two major companies the DRDO, and HAL have played a key role, behind India's defence export. And also, Defence Expo, is also a good step, by government, which provide platform, to buyers and sellers. In a report, published by Swedish think tank, Stockholm, International Peace Research Institute, said India's arms imports saw a 33% drop, between 2011 to 2015, and 2016 to 2020. And, the US remains, the largest arms exporter, increasing its global share of arms exports, from 32 to 37%, between 2011 to 2015, and 2016 to 20 and 47% of the arms supplies went to the Middle East. Saudi Arabia alone accounted for 24% of total US arms exports. Both Russia and China saw their arms exports falling. Russia substantially increased its arms transfers to China, Algeria, and Egypt between 2011 to 2015 and 2016 to 20. But this, did not offset the large drop, in its arms exports to India. The report said, France increased its exports of major arms, by 44%, and accounted for 8.2% of global arms exports, in 2016-2020. India, Egypt and Qatar, together received 59% of the French exports. The report said, the drop in Indian arms imports seems to have, mainly on account of its complex procurement processes, combined with an attempt to reduce its dependence on Russian arms. Russia witnessed a 53% fall in its arms exports to India as Delhi's imports from Paris increased. And Moscow increased its exports to Beijing. The new data comes at a time when the Narendra Modi government is taking steps to reduce imports with a focus on make in India. Due to liberal policies adopted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government since 2014, there has been a substantial increase in India's defence exports. India's defence export has jumped by 700% in just two years. In a written reply to the Upper House of Parliament, the Ministry of Defence said 304 contracts were signed for modernization of armed forces, in the previous five fiscals 2015-16 to 2019-20, and the current financial year, up to January 2021. Out of the total, 190 contracts were signed with Indian vendors, for capital procurement of defense equipment, for armed forces. If, India is to indeed realize, its ambition of being a significant player, in the global defense scene, it would require, a massive modernization of its public defense setup, along with an infusion of capital, and technological expertise, from private companies.